As you know, in Islam, the time has a great value. Why? Because simply, time is our life. Your life is counted on you by every breathing you have. So if you're going to waste that, you're going to waste your own life, not just your own time. With this being said, we have to be aware that our life in the first place is a very short life. Compare our life term to the life term of the people or the generations who lived in time before us. We are the shortest one, definitely. People used to live in the beginning of the humanity, average 1,000 years. Look at us now. We live between the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi when he talked about this ummah, he said, قَالَ أَعْمَارُ أُمَّتِي بَيْنَ السِّتِينِ وَالسَّبْعِينَ The average life of my ummah is between 60 to 70. Some people make it more than that, some people less than that, but this is the average. 60 to 70 comparing to 1,000, that means we're getting short in life term. Which means what? Which means that we have to do really a lot in that short life that we have, we don't have to waste it because wasting it will mean wasting a lot of hasanat and a lot of opportunities to gain the happiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the day of judgment, we will see an argument that the Quran made it so clear. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks the disbelievers, قَالَ كَمْ لَبِثْتُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ عَدَدَ السِّنِينَ Allah Azza wa is questioning them. Said, how many years you stayed on the earth? قَالُوا لَبِسْنَا يَوْمًا أَوْ بَعْضَيْهُمْ Allah is asking them about the years. And they say, maybe we stayed a day, 24 hours, or maybe less than that. Imagine the big gap between what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to them and what they say. And actually, they are not lying. They are saying the truth. Because when we come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and look back at the reality of the life that they lived, it looks like a dream. So they said, our life was like few hours, one day, full day if you can say, so it's nothing. And that's true. Look at us now, we are living that dream or that very short life. And some of us are not aware of that. They are too busy with a lot of things. I'm not saying that you're going to spend all your time in the ibadah. Oh, and you're not going to have any time for you or for your family or for some activities or for some fun. No, that's not what I mean. But what I mean is some people, some Muslims are not aware at all of the value of Yusuf. He's abusing his time and purpose. Even when he finds himself willing to do some ta'a, some obedience and some ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he makes himself lazy. And that's a dangerous part of it. Because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that inna li kulli amalin shirra. You know, every deed we do has its own peak. You know, the highest point of it. You will do until you reach your highest level of doing good in the ibadah. Wa inna li kulli shirra fatra. So when you find yourself active in reading the Quran or praying or whatever, that, anything that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or saying the adhkar and dhikr, mentioning the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever, whatever the good thing you are doing is. When you find yourself active, don't stop it. Keep going because this is your best shot and this is your best chance. Don't waste it. And the Prophet sallallahu said, when you, we, you reach the highest point of the curve, then naturally you will decline slowly. So he said, وَلِكُلِّ شِرَّةٍ فَتْرَةٍ But after that activity, high activity, there will come a time of being a little bit lazy or slowing down. فَمَنْ كَانَتْ فَتْرَتُهُ إِلَىٰ طَاعَةٍ فَقَدْ هُدِيَ رَشَدٍ That's the thing. The slowing down, you have to watch yourself. After you was so active in ibadah and obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't now be inclined to the ma'asiyah and to the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you find yourself lazy, yes, you can cool down. You're not going to do the same uh, uh, amount of hasanat or good deeds that you were doing. But at the same time, you will do your best to avoid all the bad deeds and the things that displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here is the same. You know, if you just keep the obligatory things that ibadah that the five daily prayers and the fasting of Ramadan and you know all these things that Allah made obligatory and must on you and you don't do any sins that is better than doing a lot of good deeds and doing a lot of bad deeds at the same time you know so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he talked about you know our life 
he summarized the whole life that this life is a life to gain the eternal life. This life is not a life to stay in it. That's a very short time that will make you qualified and ready to go to the Jannah, which is the everlasting life and the real life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا the only reason I created humans and jinn is to worship me, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the main point and the main purpose of our life, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to please Allah. Yes, along uh, with that worship, we live our normal life. That's fine. There's nothing wrong about it. But we should not uh, ignore the fact or the reason why we are in this life. We have to be focused on that. Don't let the dunya take you away from the akhirah. The akhirah should, should be the, the first thing. When the, the, the people uh, who are misguided go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everyone would say a sentence that is very interesting when you listen to it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about them, يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي قَدَّمْتُ لِحَيَاتِي The kafir would say, I wish I have done ahead for my life. What life he's talking about? He already died and he went to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, by the common sense of us, our ration would say, I wish I have done for my death. Or what's after death? But he's talking about the life. What life is talking about? The everlasting life. Because he did not count this life that he lived in life, in, in this world. He think that this is something, you know, not worthy of mentioning. But the life is the life to come. The life of the Akhirah. That's why he say, I wish I have done for my life. I have done ahead a lot of good deeds and prepared for the coming life, which is the Akhirah. When he's there already, which is too late. Because when you see the wishes of the kuffar, and these are, as a scholar said, الأمنيات المستحيلات The impossible wish The wish that will never come true When somebody say يا ليتني قدمت لي حياتي I wish I have done for my, for my life It's not going to work خلاص You finish your life term You're not going to get back And the other one would say رب رجعون Oh Allah I wish that you bring me back to the, you know, the worldly life The dunya لعلي أعمل صالحا فيما تركت So that I will do good this time and what I have messed up before in my life. It's impossible. It's not gonna happen. It's too late. But we are living it right now. Why would you miss the chance and let the dunya take you away from the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You have been warned. You read the Quran and you, you get all these messages. So you have no excuse about that. Okay? So this is our main goal to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But on the other hand, we are allowed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not block us from having the pleasures of the dunya as long as these pleasures do not contradict with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us. Because we're humans, we're going to enjoy the, the food that we eat, there is nothing wrong about it, don't blame yourself. If you cook, uh, if your wife or your daughter or your sister cook some good food for you and you're sharing that with the family, enjoy it, that's halal. If you go to a restaurant and you eat a good meal, that's halal. As long as you're not eating something haram, the food itself is not haram, and you did not buy this food with haram money, so you don't have to worry. Enjoy it. Enjoy it to the maximum point of it. قُلْ مَنْ حَرَّمَ زِينَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي أَخْرَجَ لِعِبَادِهِ وَالطَّيِّبَاتِ مِنَ الرِّزْقِ قُلْ هِيَ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا خَالِصَةً يَوْمَ الْقِيَامِ Say, who would say to the good things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to the believers in the dunya that this is haram? Nobody has the right to say that. Who would say to the good food and the good things that Allah gave to the believer that this is not allowed for them? Nobody dares to say that. It's halal. Enjoy it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that it will be khalisatan yawm al qiyamah. It will be exclusively for the believers on the day of judgment. Now, we share the pleasures of the world with its believers as well. Allah Azza wa Jal yarzuqu al-mu'min wal-kafir. Allah provides for the believer and the disbeliever. An equal, equal thought. Everybody eats, drinks, breathes the air, enjoys the life. It's fine. But on the akhirah, when you go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on the day of judgment, in the akhirah, it will be a different story. It will be only for the believers that 
the disbelievers will wish for a sip of cold and cool water and they will be denied to the access to that. وَنَادَى أَصْحَابُ النَّارُ أَصْحَابَ الْجَنَّةِ When the people of the fire, of the hellfire, call upon the people of the Jannah and أَفِيضُوا عَلَيْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ أَوْ مِمَّا رَزَقَكُمُ اللَّهِ Please give us some water from the fresh cold water that you have or anything from what Allah provided you with, any of the good food that you have because you don't have any of these in the fire. Then the answer will be no. إِنَّ اللَّهَ حَرَّمَهُمَا عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ Allah made both of them, the water and the food, haram for the kuffar. That's it. It's over. They don't share that anymore. So we have to be careful in our life to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to do our best and enjoy the life. I will give you one hadith that summarizes the whole idea here. Because some people think that well, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I have to torture my body. No, that is not pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have to live a miserable life to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, who said that? That is not true. If you want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you do what Allah commanded you in the Quran and what the Prophet sallallahu explained in his sunnah. That's it. And I told you before about the hadith, about the three men who came to the house of the Prophet and everybody started, you know, Telling about the special thing he's doing. One of them fasts every day. Another guy, you know, prays the whole night. A third the guy said, I'm not going to get married to any women to not to have any pleasure. So the Prophet said, all of you are wrong. I do all of this. I eat and I drink. I fast some days, some days I don't fast. I pray part of the night and another part of the night I take a nap and sleep. I get married to women and that's fine. Allah never made it, uh, you know, uh, haram for the humans in general and also... For the prophets and messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلًا مِّن قَبْلِكَ Indeed, we have sent messengers before you, O Prophet Muhammad. وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُمْ أَزْوَاجًا وَذُرِّيًّا And we give them wives and children. It's not wrong for a prophet to get married and to have, you know, children and kids, you know. So, we have to be aware of that. You know, having this balance in our life, focusing on the akhirah, and at the same time, enjoying the dunya that we have. That is what we need to have. I will give you one hadith that Hamdal al Asdi, one of the Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, one day he was talking to Abu Bakr Siddiq, and then Abu Bakr is asking him, "كيف أنت يا حمدلا? How are you doing, حمدلا?" قال he gave him a surprising answer that made Abu Bakr Siddiq, you know, shocked. قال نافق حمدلا. I think I'm doing acts of hypocrisy. I'm a hypocrite. And he knows that this man is a very sincere and good believer. He said, why are you saying? Why are you saying that? He said, because when we are with the Prophet وسلم, and he's advising us and talking to us about the Akhirah and the Jannah and Naat, it looks like we believe in it as if we see it. We are at the highest point of Iman. As if our certainty and our belief 100%. As if we look at the fire, we look at the Jannah. When we go back home, then we get busy with our wives, with our children, with our money and business. We get back to our normal life and we're not at the same point or at the same level. So Abu Bakr Siddiq thought about it for a while and he said, it is not only you like that. It's me and it's everybody. Let's go to the Prophet وسلم, and ask him about that. So they both went to Rasulullah told him about the whole story and about the whole situation. And then the Prophet وسلم, said, No, it is not that you are hypocrites or anything. No, that's normal, that's natural. Walakin sa'atun wa sa'a. Yes, sometime when you are reminded right now in Qutbat al Jumu'ah. When you are listening, you are charging your iman. Your iman is getting higher, you know. But when you get busy with life, with work and stuff like that, of course your mind is busy, you're focusing on the work and stuff like that. So it is fine. So you have some time for that when you come to the salah, whether the five daily prayers or the salat al jumuah or whether you are sitting by yourself and when you have some free time and you're reading the Quran or when you are praying at night. Yeah, this is the highest point of iman. Your iman is getting higher. Okay, 
But when you go to the normal daily life, you're joking with your kids, you're eating, you're drinking, you're going outside, then of course you're not going to be at the same level, but you're still okay. So the Prophet told him, Sa'a wa sa'a, spend some time for that, and sometimes also for fun, the halal fun, if you can say that. You know, the normal daily life, as long as there's nothing wrong about it. You see? So this is the balance we need in our life, that you're going to give some time for the ibadah, and the, uh, by the way, our life is all ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even when you are eating and you're drinking, you are doing this with the intention to maintain your power and your strength and to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That. You get rewarded for that. When you are dealing with your wife and your kids in a nice way and taking care of them and raising them and taking them outside for a picnic or anything like that, you get hasanat for that from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even the normal, normal daily life, we get rewarded for that. It's not like we are off. No. But we are not at the same high point that we used to have before, which is fine, because we're humans. Even the, the Prophet ﷺ will get some time for his family. Okay, so th this is fine. There is nothing wrong about this at all. Sa'atun wa sa'a. This is the balance we need in our life. Because if someone ignores his family totally and he wants to stay in the masjid 24 hours, then that is not Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا رهبانية في الإسلام There is no رهبانية in Islam. رهبانية is somebody isolates himself in a room and he just prays the whole day and night. He has nothing to do like the monks and stuff like that before Islam. We don't have this concept in Islam. We don't have the concept that the, the religious man or the man of religion, the imam or the sheikh or the scholar doesn't get married to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like when they have this in Christianity and other religions. We don't have that in Islam. That concept is totally wrong. Even those people, they made it up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَرَهْبَانِيَّتَنِ بِتَدَعُوهَا مَا كَتَبْنَاهَا عَلَيْهِمْ They made up this thing. We did not force it on them. You see? So, with that being said, as a Muslim, you are asked to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to have fun in your life and to plan your life is good. Why we're saying that right now? Because we're getting closer to the summer. Now everybody's finishing, the, you know, our younger is finishing their own exams. And also the elders, they take off sometimes in summer. So you have to have your own plan from now on, you know, to give some more time for the family, to have your plan also to, maybe in the summer you can learn something that you have been uh, missing in your life. Maybe in a short time in the summer, in a month or two, you can go learn the tajweed. It's not hard. To learn the tajweed, you know, the proper way of reciting the Qur'an. Give some time. If you give half an hour every day to that, it will work. Maybe, you, you know, you never came across reading the whole tafsir of the Qur'an in your life. In summer, if you give half an hour every day reading of the tafsir, the meanings of the ayat, and you put a mark where you stop every day, then by the whole summer you would be finished with, you know, a big part of it, which is great and amazing. So you must have, besides the family and the fun and the picnics and going outside and all these activities, because you have 24 hours. No way. You're going to get these 24 hours and, and all that. You still have some time. Both on your plan and your agenda to do some activities, you know, for yourself to increase your iman and your knowledge in, in, in deen. Same thing for your own children. Teach them some life skills, you know, in the summer, maybe teaching them how to drive a bike or how to swim or, or this all these activities are good. You know, you give them more experience in life. And as well, give them some educational skills, whether you are talking about the academics, because when you leave them in the summertime, they are forgetting a lot from whatever they studied. So give them some time. You know, I used to do that with my kids all the time. If they leave the Quran during these two months, they will forget. So we take some time every day to review. At least if we're not memorizing a lot, at least we're reviewing, you know. Give some time for uh, teaching how to read Arabic properly for your own kids, you know. Maybe some of them don't know how to read yet. Get him a teacher, you know, in the summer. He's not going to be a full-time student as a school time, but at least uh, every other day. So you're gaining something. In summer, you can gain a lot of things. You know, summer is not just uh, to stay uh, doing nothing dur during the 24 hours. It's not like that. That concept was not there at all. Yes, we are supposed to have some fun to refresh our souls because as humans we get bored, you know, of the daily routine that we have. So summer is a good chance for you to refresh yourself. I'm telling you, take advantage of it. But at the same time, don't forget to take your own share of learning something that's beneficial for you 
and for your own family. Jazakumullah khairan wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiruh. الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض وجعل الظلمات والنور وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله فاللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد Sometimes we think well it's just 5 minutes or 10 minutes 15 minutes 20 minutes it's just one hour I'm not going to be able to do anything in that time that's how, how we think right but believe it or not Sometimes the difference between you and making it to Jannah could be one minute or one second, if you can say. Let me give you an example. All of you or most of you know the story of the man who killed 100 people, right? That's a very famous story. The man killed 99 and it came to his heart that he wants to change and be a good man. Then he asked about the most knowledgeable one. They told him about, you know, uh, one of the, the, the best worshippers, if you can see, Abid. So he went to him and said, I killed 99 people. There is a chance for me to repent to Allah and be a good man. He said, no, kill 99 people. You know, you're a killer. You're a serial killer and you, you know. So he said, okay. He killed him and then the number became 100. Okay, if there is no hope and I'm going to fire anyway, I'm not going to lose anything. You know, you're making the person in front of you desperate. So he killed him, and then the number became 100. But he didn't stop. He's still asking, tell me about a man who can tell me that I have a chance. So they told him about someone who have real knowledge this time. He went to him, told him his story. Then the sheikh was smart. That man was really a man of knowledge. Because what we can say in this situation, if he came to me or any other sheikh, he would say to him, yes, Allah forgives all the sins other than disbelieving in him. So you have a chance to repent, just ask Allah to forgive you, you know, start correcting your life. But the sheikh was far beyond that. He told him, I want you to repent to Allah, but you have to do something for me or for yourself. He said, what is it? He said, you have to move from your city. And I will tell you about a good city that has good brothers. You can worship Allah with them. Why? The sheikh is so smart. What is so smart about that? He told him that the environment that you live in, is what made you like that. If you killed 100 people in the same place and they're okay with it, then there is something wrong about this city. They are all c criminals or bad people or evil, evil people. You have to move away from them to change. You cannot change like that. So the man took it from him and said, yes, I will move. He didn't go home. He started moving towards that, the good city. And right in the middle of the way, death came to him. If this man waited just one day, he said, you know what? Let us do it tomorrow or a month later or a year later, which we do. In many situations in our life, we keep delaying things and put them in the future. It's a big mistake. Sometimes you don't guarantee to live to that day. You know, sometimes your intention will go down and you don't do what you intended to do. But this man did it because he was so determined in the middle. So the angels of mercy came to take his soul and the angels of punishment and they argued together. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent an angel to judge between them. He said, Qisu al-Masafa. Measure the distance between him and the bad city and the, the distance between him and the good city. So they found that he's just one foot closer to the good city. He passed. If this man was late five minutes, he wouldn't make it. He wouldn't make it. So... Don't be late when it comes to the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Take advantage of every minute, I would say every second in your life. If you're not doing something good, then at least don't do something bad that, that displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma ghfir lana dhunubana wa kafir anna sayyatina.